Hey everyone, welcome to Fibroids on a Friday, a video series about fibroids on a Friday. And so this is gonna be a multiple episode series talking about uterine fibroids, answering all the most common questions about uterine fibroids. This would include things like, what are they? Um, are they cancerous? What are my treatment options? What's the new research regarding uterine fibroids? Do I need surgery for my uterine fibroids? And so we're gonna be going over all that through this series. This is episode one, and we're gonna go really basic here, and that is what are uterine fibroids? Because they're one of the most common pelvic growths that someone can have. And fibroids go by many names. They can be uterine leiomyomas, they can be myomas, they can be monoclonal tumors of the uterus, many names all for the same thing. And the big question that we get all the time, all the time is, are these cancerous tumors? And we'll just get right off the bat and say, no, they're not. These are benign tumors of the uterus. Um, there can be some other potential uterine cancers out there that are very, very, very rare, but we'll go over that too in a much later episode. And so often what I see in clinic as an OBGYN is that um, people come in, they have these uterine fibroids, and they're really stressed about the diagnosis of having uterine fibroids because they had an ultrasound or a CT scan that showed that they had fibroids within the muscle of their uterus. And whether or not they have symptoms, it can cause kind of a high level of stress. But I often just start off by reassuring people that uterine fibroids are very common and they're not always causing symptoms. In fact, maybe only 25% of uterine fibroids really cause symptoms, but through a woman's reproductive years of their life, starting at uh, menarche, or when the periods start, all the way to menopause, they're, um, they have about a 70 to 80% chance of developing uterine fibroids throughout that time. And because fibroids really love hormones of the, of the body and that the ovaries are producing, they mainly grow during those menstrual years. And so when someone goes through menopause, they generally um, stop growing. And this is the case most of the time. So what these fibroids are exactly is if we zoom in in the uterine muscle and we look at a cellular level, these are um, growing from the smooth muscle cells and the fibroblasts within that muscle, all of a sudden that little microscopic muscle gets the wrong signal and just all of a sudden starts to um, proliferate or grow into um, a small mass. And these can potentially remain very small through someone's life, uh, like a microscopic or the size of a pea, but they also can grow very large, the size of a volleyball, maybe even basketball. And so, um, in that process, these, these cells are just getting the wrong signal and all of a sudden they continue to grow and that can or cannot have symptoms that are associated with it. And again, they really love hormones. They love to grow at, in the menstrual years when those ovaries are still producing a lot of the hormones in the body. Um, and so fibroids can be very different in their consistency also. And what I mean by that, how they feel, they can be soft, but also they can be very hard. They can be you know, like we talked about big, like the size of baseball, they can be as hard as a baseball. And that's when they're often going through um, what we call what we call this calcification. Um, they're hardening. Often that's associated with fibroids that are a little more inactive and um, usually in someone that's after menopause. And we talk, okay, so we just talked about how these fibroids grow and how they um, get all these signals. And so how can we stop these signals? And so unfortunately, in the past and kind of now, we don't understand a lot about what these signals are. And so a lot of research is going into this. A lot of people are putting in the effort to really find out how these fibroids are starting, what signals are they getting? Because why fibroids grow, the big question is why, can be multifactorial. And that means there's a number of different factors such as genetics, and they're starting to understand some of the genetics that go into uterine fibroid growth. They're starting to understand that certain environmental factors matter too, and this could be things which people are exposed to in their surroundings. This could also be things that people eat. People, things that we consume might increase this inflammation, which might cause these fibroids to get the signal to grow. Later on in the series, we are gonna go over a lot of the, you know, the different impacts that fibroids can have in someone's life, the symptoms that they have. But let's not forget about the other stressors that this can cause in someone's life because that the, the symptoms of bleeding, maybe pelvic pressure, pain, maybe infertility can cause actually some pretty significant um, mental stress, 
some social stress because it's impacting your life and sometimes what you can do. Also, you know, economically, this um, can cause some stress. Not only cost to the patient for treatment options for surgeries, but it, this is a big cost to healthcare system. And so we really want to figure out these fibroids, what is causing them, and hopefully prevent them in the future. But for the remainder of these episodes, we're going to go all into depth about different terminology for uterine fibroids, what different types you can have, and um, and we're going to go over treatments too, the medical treatment options to you know, preserve the uterus so someone can have future children if they want or if they just want to preserve their uterus because obviously that should be a priority too and not everyone that has fibroids needs or should get a hysterectomy. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. And again, this is just part one in a multi-video series about uterine fibroids as we continue to understand them more and debunk some myths regarding uh, fibroids and their treatment and all of that. And so stay tuned, um, follow along with us, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and the weekend. Happy Fibroid Friday.